Hey everyone. So I was watching this interview. It was really, really interesting. I don't think I'm all the way yet, but um, it was really interesting. And it's by Carnivore Yogi, who now goes by Sarah Kleiner Wellness, I guess. And it's in relation to vitamin D supplementations. And they're talking about how you may not need vitamin D supplementation. So I'll let you guys watch it because there's no point in me like rehashing what they say. But basically, um, they, they say that there's different kind of storage mechanisms in the body and that perhaps over supplementation has negative effects. Now, is this true? Do we need to supplement vitamin D? Let's look into it. So in this article, um, it's, a it's written by a, a nurse who's been, she seems as though she's very well versed in the subject, but does your vitamin D accumulate in your system? So basically, can we store it? Can we get through the winter? We all know how, I hope we all know how we get vitamin D, right? It's either food or sun or supplements. And there's not a lot in your food, like fatty fish. The reason why I love salmon so much is from like a three, three and a half ounce portion of salmon. You can get most of your vitamin D if I'm not mistaken. Um, so it's a great source of vitamin D. Egg yolks may not have enough, but even looking into things like uh, mussels and, and shellfish, uh, mussels especially, they have a type of vitamin D that's very highly absorbable, which is cool. So um, yeah, and even like fish roe, like a caviar type thing, sometimes you can get enough from that. So anyway, that's how you get it. There's also, you know, fortified milk if you're into that, but I'm not really, uh, not really my thing. Oh, and cod liver, like if you've ever eaten it, I love it. <laughs> My kids don't like it, but I love it. And um, it's super high too. So you can get it from food. It's not easy, but you can do it. Obviously, if you're on a vegan diet, it's gonna be a lot harder. You're looking at radiated mushrooms as your source and that's D2, right? So your D does get stored in your fat and your liver. And she says here, it can supply your needs through the winter months if you don't get enough D, vitamin D in your diet throughout the winter which is really cool, right? If it's true, obviously. Um, spending enough time in the sun in the spring, summer, and fall can fill your vitamin D stores to last through the winter. As little as five minutes per day of sunlight on exposed skin between the hours of 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. might be enough if you burn easily. If you tan well or have a darker skin tone, you might need more time up to 20 minutes according to Dermnet uh, NZ, which is right here. So I think a lot of people think that I don't, um, I don't spend time in the sun because I've made videos about how I cover up, how I use clothing to cover up instead of sunscreen. I don't like slathering myself with sunscreen. Um, in, in the summer, I wear a nice big hat and I cover up mostly, most of the time, okay, from the sun. But <laughs> apparently, you know, in full on summer, someone like me who burns very easily needs five whole minutes, five whole minutes out in the sun to get my d vitamin D stores topped up. And if you tan really easily, it said 20, right? Probably if you have the darker your skin, the more time you're going to need, but five minutes. So if I'm covering up my entire body and then once in a while, just exposing it, cause I literally spend like most of my days outside in the summer as much as I can. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely getting my five minutes, you guys. I know some people were like super concerned about this, but, um, yeah. So here it says, this is it. Skin type one and two may only need five, uh, five minutes of sun exposure each day between 11 and four to the face, hands and forearm. That's not even your whole body <laughs> where, whereas like if I'm wearing a long dress and I'm outside, like, and the sun's not too strong, I will lift up the dress to expose my legs and my entire legs, my entire arms, you know, and get some sun at least five minutes a day. And I'm not even worried about myself, but I know some people work. So there you go. And then, um, 
Whereas someone who tans more easily or has darker skin, types five and six will need more time, up to 20 minutes. And that's up to, so. And surprisingly, um, it's better if you're exercising, which is kind of cool. Uh, there's no advantage in spending longer in the sun and is, does not increase the production of vitamin D beyond the initial amount. Um, during winter, it says, in southern New Zealand, this is a New Zealand um, site, when UV radiation levels are dramatically lower, vitamin D status may drop below adequate levels. Additional measures to achieve vitamin D status may be required, particularly for those at risk of vitamin D deficiency. So there's certain groups of people who may need extra help in the winter. Summer levels of vitamin D influence winter levels. So that's important to note. Get out in the summer so that your winter, you may not have to supplement. Um, so who are these groups uh, at risk? It says here are some groups in the community are at increased risk of vitamin D deficiency. These include the elderly, babies of vitamin D deficient mothers, people who are housebound or in institutional care, people with darker skin types, those who avoid sun exposure due to photosensitivity disorders, and those who cover their skin for religious, religious or cultural reasons and probably aren't exposing it, right? Um, so yes, for people like that, I would definitely suggest um, eating some vitamin D. And that's another thing I want to mention. Like I eat salmon throughout the year and, and different fish and seafood throughout the year. Uh, sometimes egg yolks, I don't tolerate them great. So um, I eat these things throughout the year as well as going outside for at least five minutes <laughs> and exposing my skin. So definitely I should be getting more than enough. And if you are the same as me, you should be too. But for these people, um, I would suggest taking a vitamin D supplement. And honestly, if I was vegan, I'd probably be taking one uh, as well as a B12 supplement for sure. And I wanted to point out one other thing, which I think is interesting, which kind of goes along this initial video that I had talked about. And that's something that was found in this article, which was linked in the original article. It says here, under serum concentrations of 25 OHD. R right here I'm reading, Reachers, researchers have not definitively identified serum concentrations of 25 OHD associated with deficiency. What? So they don't know, <laughs> they don't know uh, what levels of vitamin D are associated with deficiency. Um, adequacy for bone health, and overall health. So basically these recommendations they're giving you, you don't know, <laughs> we don't know, we don't know. We think it might be good, but you know, try it and see how you go. That's what you're getting here. This is why I don't like supplementation because with food, you're not gonna get too much and your body's gonna deal with it as long as you're not eating like 10 salmon a day or something. Um, you're probably gonna be fine if you eat normal levels of salmon. Uh, but look, they don't even know <laughs> how much you should be taking. This is another reason I hate supplements. They don't know. So after reviewing data on vitamin D needs, an expert committee uh, concluded that people are at risk of vitamin D deficiency at serum levels less than 30. That's what they think. Um, see table one for definitions of deficiency. Some people are potentially at risk of inadequacy at 30 to 50. Um, levels of 50 are okay for most people, but they don't know. <laughs> they don't know anything about, at least according to this article, as of, when was this written? Okay, it says here, updated August 12, 2022. Still don't know. Still not evaluated, I assume. Anyway, so I think... Um, it might be right. It might be right that taking too much of a supplementation can be dangerous. We don't know the levels that you're supposed to be taking yet, apparently. And it might just be safer to go out in the summer months, get as much sun as you possibly can, especially if you're pale like me, and just make it through the winter. Okay, maybe, if you can. And if you can't, um, maybe supplement here and there, but I wouldn't go nuts about it. 
And I just want to point out one more thing because this was a really interesting article on vitamin D stored in fat tissue during a five-year intervention. So the intervention I'm not as concerned about really, but um, basically they gave one group of people like a really high dose of vitamin C or D for like three to five years. Yeah, three to five year prevention type period. And then the other group, uh, the, they got a placebo. They didn't get any prevention, right? But doesn't mean, um, well, probably they weren't um, supplementing, right? Just in case they got the real one. So um, I believe they started with these levels of vitamin D. And then, um, and yes, the, the intervention group did have higher serum levels after 12 months, okay? But look at this graph. It's hard to show the whole thing, but vitamin D group and placebo group. The placebo started off lower, but look, over time their um, vitamin D actually went up and the placebo group just went down and kind of normalized, still higher, but normalized and actually kept going down. And I should mention this group did supplement still a little bit during, um, during the 12 months after. So, but the point is, their vitamin D levels kept going up. Theirs just kind of came down. So vitamin D kind of just normalizes itself, it looks like. Anyway, kind of another interesting study. And I agree with this video about vitamin D supplementations. Do you need to supplement? Maybe not. 